Hey everybody! Welcome back. It is Boozy Book Club. It's been forever. It's been it's been forever. I feel like we haven't had Boozy Book Club in months and months and months. Although we really only took the summer off. Welcome back. Uh, if you are new to that's normal or new to Boozy Book Club, this is our online book club chat. We do this once a month. We have. Uh, a book or two that we read over the month, and then at the end of the month we get together and we drink heavily and discuss <laughs> them. Um, heavily. That's why it's <laughs> that's why it's boozy book club because if we were going to talk about it seriously, we would not lead li need libations. But it's not the most serious of book clubs, and uh, it's just for fun and it's just for you guys. And this month we had some of the best books that we've had in a long time, and our readers really loved them, and we really loved them. And we're here to talk about them. So this month, if you're just joining us on the podcast or if you're just joining us online or if you found this years from now, we're discussing The Hating Game by Sally Thorne and Arcana Rising by Cressley Cole. So those are our two books. Stay tuned if you're here to talk about the Arcana Chronicles because we are going to talk about those, where they're headed, where they're going, but we're going to talk about them second because first up is The Hating Game. And before we do that, we need to introduce our panel so hi, I'm Beth. I'm having um, champagne because my husband bunch of it home and opened it, and so that's what I'm having. And it's not in a champagne glass, and I don't care. And I'm really excited. I'm really, really excited to talk about these books tonight. And I want to introduce you to everybody else that's with us. Anne, say hello. Hey everyone, it's Anne. I'm here failing the boozy part of boozy book club with water, but <laughs> next time I will be on my A game and have some bourbon or something. But anyways, I love both of these books, and I can't wait to talk about them. So, hi, everyone. Yay. Yay. Laura, say hi. Hello. I'm Laura, and I am an old man tonight, and I'm drinking scotch. Ooh. So there you go. Lucky. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Hello, Becca. I'm Rebecca. <laughs> I am drinking vino, and I've had a bunch because I went to dinner, and I can't stop drinking. Um, I have a real quick question. If somebody can tweet us, uh, am I controlling the camera? If I am, I'm going to Beth's face right now. So do you see Beth's face right now, front and center? Please let me know if you do, because I can't tell if Beth or I are controlling the camera. Otherwise, um, here I am in sunny Philadelphia, and I'm very excited to talk about one of the books, because I only read one of them. <laughs> Which one was that? I read The Hating Game, and it's not because I don't love the Arcana Chronicles, I just didn't do it yet because I'm a failure at life. I'm, I'm drunk. Like, I'm legitimately drunk. <laughs> <laughs> it is 10.04 and I am drunk. On a Monday. And it's a win it, guys. It's a win it. Well, good because we uh, we need somebody to man Twitter that's super drunk. So that's going to work out really well. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not manning the camera. Is it on Beth right now? Because if so, I controlled that. Uh, I think I'm controlling it. It's, okay, it's changing for me. I don't know. No one said yet. Okay. Guys, if you're talking to us online, uh, we use the hashtag TN Book Club, but you can just, you know, talk to us. at that's normal, at, at that's underscore normal, and we'll see it. So um, but we are talking with that hashtag so that we can find the story later. Um, and if you want to uh, talk to the authors tonight, since we are talking about books that we loved, you can tweet Sally Thorne. Thorne! No relation. <laughs> no relation, unfortunately, because if there was, I would just I'd eat her brain so that I could write that oh way. Um, <laughs> Wait, Courtney, thank you. She just told me that it's not me controlling it. I think it's Beth. Okay, thanks. Like I said, thank you, Courtney. Okay. Um, but uh, the the Black Arrow is Sally's um, Twitter handle. It's that underscore Black underscore Arrow, and that is kind of an obnoxious Twitter handle, as Becca reminded us earlier, but. It's from her Twifig days, and it may even predate Twifig days. So for those of you who don't know, Sally Thorne is a former Twifig author. Yeah, I didn't know this. Can we just real quick to discuss what she wrote? <laughs> Absolutely. Tell me more. Uh, Anne, Laura, you guys were not involved in any sort of Twilight no. thing, right? <laughs> no, sadly not. Oh, guys, this was, a, this was a great time in life. <laughs> Twifig era. It was a great time in life. Circa 2009 to 2012 were good years, and Sally wrote uh, The Blessing and the Curse. Does that ring a bell, Becca? No, but I only read, like, that one about the cookies. Okay. <laughs> um, 
That actually makes perfect sense. Like, it read Twyfic knows exactly what she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Despite the fact that there are like 25,000 Twyfix. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. What, what was that one called? It was called Wide Awake. And that masturbation scene next to the, behind the tree, or like, uh, it was great. I don't remember. No, how. I think like he was just like rubbing her. <laughs> <laughs> yes, probably. They had, yeah. they both had, they were, they, that was an issue fix. They had issues and they were yeah, both totally. like, yeah. like emotional intimacy. Yeah. Totally. Right. They were insomniacs. One of them carried like a pebble in their s pocket. Um, but like, uh, the blessing and the curse was one of these really, really great, great Twifix that didn't update very regularly. But when it did update, everybody was was watching it. So we all were on discussing like the one update that had just happened. And um, it was really great. Edward kind of had like this magical control over Bella's thoughts, like he could read her thoughts if he touched her and stuff, so he was, they grew up together, so he was constantly like touching her and, and just in little ways where nobody else would notice, but like reading her thoughts and she hated it and they hated each other and then but really he loved her and that's why he did it. Anyway, it was really good. <laughs> <laughs> it was she really good. A, she wrote such a damn good romance, man. So when we knew that Sally was had been writing books, anybody that's followed her Twifit Days has been following her Twitter for a long time. This is her debut, and guys, it really surpassed like what I anticipated was going to happen. I most Twifit former Twifit authors, this is not the case for all of them, but a lot of them are being really like like useless drivel. I'm not reading it, like I'm not interested in what they're doing, but. Uh, with a few exceptions, this one kind of surpassed all of them. Um, this is one of the best contemporary romances I've I've ever read. I think. What did you guys think? I loved it. I thought it was great. Yeah, it was just. I don't know the last time I read a contemporary that was this yeah. easy to read. That like wasn't obviously like this is just like it's an office romance. This is how many times have we read this exact same story, right? But for yeah. some, her writing. It was just it didn't try too hard. It was just so perfect. Characters. Yeah. yeah. I feel like she like strung you along until <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it was never I don't know, you kinda kept waiting for like when is it gonna happen? And it happened like right. at the very end of the book. So it was just turning pages, waiting for them to finally figure it out. Which was in, but it was enjoyable. It wasn't frustrating. It was like you just love like being being a part of it. I don't know. One of the things that I think a lot of people said on our Goodreads group, which, by the way, if you're not on our Goodreads group, it's That's Our Most Boozy Fuck Club on Goodreads. Get on it and chat about the books during the month before we have our hangout, and then we can talk about what you talked about while we're here. Um, but a lot of people had the same thought, which is what my thought was, which I had to immediately reread it. Mm -hmm. Like, I got yeah. done with it. And I couldn't. Yeah. And people were saying either I couldn't stop thinking about it, and I need to pick it back up, or I had to pick it back up right away and start rereading it. So I know why I felt that way. But what did you guys think? Like, why do you think it required a reread? That's such an odd thing for a contemporary romance. I think it's because of all of the little things that Josh did that makes you want to go back and reread it to see if you can like if it comes out in a different light. You know what I mean? Like the whole like. The bedroom, paint, everything, like all of it. This is cute. Yeah. yeah, I think like for because it's contemporary romance. Like nobody actually expects it to be good. I mean, to be honest, it, it's true. So like you're just like, okay, I'm gonna read a book. Everyone's talking about it. It's gonna be like a romance. I'm gonna read for book club, and then we're reading it, and then suddenly we're like, wait, this is a good book. Like, I don't want to go to bed. It's 1 o'clock in the morning. I need to get up at 6 a.m., and I can't stop reading this book. So you're reading it because you just want to know what happens. You're like, am I going to be stuck in this no-sex zone forever? And then you have to go to bed, and then you miss something, and then you're just like, i got to read this book again. And that's yeah. happened to me. Yeah. It was like the whole book was just enjoyable. Like even when before they were together, it was just fun to read like their banter, I think, like how they interacted together and it's like that's just fun. Like I want to relive those conversations and relive those moments. And yeah, they were really cute and made me happy. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it's like I knew I knew 100% that I needed to see knowing that Josh had been in love with her the whole time, yeah. I needed yeah. to reread the whole book and look at all of their interactions, even from the beginning when it seemed like they were hating each other, 
and figure him out. So I needed to see it. It's like um, it's like that thing where a lot of the romances that we read now, contemporary ones especially, you get that dual point of view. You get yeah. his, you know, his chapter yeah. and her chapter, his chapter and her chapter, and it takes a lot of that mystery away. And so yeah. this one was just Lucy's, and they made it so much better. But then once you knew, I had to go back and like see how I felt about it from, you know, looking at it from Josh's perspective. And um, the second time was even better, even though the first time. We should probably see like who stayed up the latest or who missed work. Like do like a Twitter <laughs> poll. Like tell us like how bad <laughs> ever did you have? Like one of those things where you come to like a get to know you like convention or something. They're like who flew the farthest or whatever. <laughs> I want to see like who stayed up the latest. Me personally, I started it at like I think ten or ten thirty. And my husband's alarm went off for work before I was done. <laughs> well, that's how time is that? It was like 4.30 in the morning. And I, so I, I read nonstop except when I like got up to pee at 2 a.m. And <laughs> didn't turn the lamp off. Ryan's like having to go to work. And I, I was like, your alarm's going off. How did I have a reading? <laughs> and I think I finished at 5 a.m. And he was like showering. He was like, what is wrong with you? I was like, oh, I just had to finish this book. <laughs> So I want to see who stayed up the longest. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, I'll tweet that. I only stayed up till probably one the second night when I was finishing it, which was like because I had started it, then I was late, and then I finished the next night. Like I read it from I was watching the Olympics. It's like why well, I missed. Michael Phelps apparently won some golds. I have no idea. I, watched, I read the <laughs> painting. <game. laughs> yeah, I I fell asleep reading it last night at like eleven thirty ish. Um, but I started it again. I woke up a little bit early this morning, so I read a little bit before work, and then I sat in my car after work and read it for like a half hour, and then I was like, you should probably get home because you're a psycho. So I went home and then finished like the last chapter at home. So, yeah, that was that was me. That's normal. That's too much <laughs> normal reading. Well, you did, she did just read it like today before yeah, the club, true. so it's not that. That's pretty half normal. You know, I mean, like that. Like normal. Yeah. yeah, I started it yesterday afternoon. So. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, it is. And I didn't read it in one sitting. It was two sittings for me. <laughs> I was reading it the weekend. I was um, visiting my in-laws, and like my husband's aunt and uncle were in town from Pennsylvania, and I was antisocial, and I should have been visiting <laughs> the people that I see twice a year. Like they were like sitting on the couch talking to me, and I'm like reading a book and trying to act like I'm engaged, and I'm not. And so it was just like that whole weekend of like I kept having to reread things and be like, what? Oh, you're talking to me? What's that? Okay. So I was I was rude to family all weekend. <laughs> I was trying to read it. <laughs> I didn't stay up super late because I yeah had things to do, but like actually had to be somewhere. But yeah. Well, that's what I feel like. That was the last time that I was like that with a book, like where yeah. I like had oh, to finish wow. it. Like I just had oh. to keep finishing it. Like it's been a long time, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I get like that about books on a regular basis, but this was what was different for me was like the the book hangover that didn't just it wasn't just like I can't pick up can't like get excited about another book like that's kind of what a book hangover is where you're just kind of like ah uh, I don't really want to read anything else right now I kind of want to stay in that mm -hmm. world it wasn't that it was like I have to reread that I can't stop thinking about Josh and Lucy and I have to mm -hmm. I have to reread that book right now. I can't even remember the last time that I felt like super compelled to just like reread the one that I had. I really honestly think the last book that was like that for me was Captive Prince. And that's mm -hmm. like a totally different experience. Yeah. That's that's mm -hmm. like transcendent. This is just like a regular book and it made me have that like impetus to reread it again. Um, so what do you guys think that is? Do you think that that's banter? Like I honestly think of most, the majority of that feeling other than like I think the reread feeling has to do with Josh, but like the addictive property of the book, like the thing that makes you want like keep going, keep going, keep going, is the unresolved sexual tension. Like, is it just like when are they going to get naked? <laughs> Partly. Well, yeah. and also because like I feel like it could have happened so early, like so much earlier on in the book, and the fact that he didn't let it happen, you know. So then you're like, oh, like that, like the the sex itself wasn't necessarily the payoff in this book. I mean, even though you were, like, really glad when they did it, it was like, well, I mean, we don't just want it to be, like, hit it and quit it. Like, that's not what we're going for. Like, we're going for more because you could tell that, like, he wanted more than just that. And so 
I don't know. So that made it like, I feel like that made it kind of different from a lot of contemporary romance, where a lot of times you're like, all right, just get together already, and that's the end of the book. Whereas here we're like, no, you need to be in love with him. Like, you can't just sleep with him. You, well, you need know to love him. Yeah, you know what's weird? Like, I haven't read this, it's been like 10 days since I read the book. I don't remember, I, I remember the tension. I don't remember when they actually end up having sex. Yeah, that wasn't really the payoff in this book, which is Is it after usually, the wedding? Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I think so. Yeah. See? Beth, you read it twice. <laughs> yeah. I just finished it. It's right after the... Yeah. It's when she realizes why he painted his colors, the, the walls blue, right? Uh, yeah. Right before that, I think. Okay. Yes, she's right. That She, yeah. like, sits up and is like, oh. Yeah. And he's like, duh. It's so <laughs> Although, I, that's the one thing, like, there's two things in this book that I was kind of like, meh, and they're so minuscule. I hate to even, like, bring them up because we obviously love this book. We had people in the book club that were saying that this was their favorite boozy book club pick of all time. <laughs> of all time. <laughs> of all time. More than one person said that. So that was really great. But the, uh, uh, the elevator kiss cliche, like I'm glad she addressed it and was like, I hate us for the cliche, but it did feel like so many twifics out there, so many romance novels have an elevator cliche. So that was kind of, eh. and I don't really think that people care about their lover's eye color that much. Like, <laughs> I mean, I really love my husband's eyes. They're beautiful. They are dark, they're a very deep dark chocolate brown and my daughter one of my daughters has them and I have always loved her eyes because they look just like her dad's but like I'm not buying furniture <laughs> and painting my balls brown because he's got these chocolate eyeballs like yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> matter <laughs> so is that a thing that only light eyed people like <laughs> maybe yeah. like blue eye thing yeah, my room is blue and my eyes are blue, so maybe the, you know, oh, that has nothing to do with no. it. <laughs> my, my room is blue and my eyes are blue, so <laughs> my room is incidentally blue. I didn't mean yeah. for it to be blue. It just kind of happened. <laughs> yeah. So. I don't know. I don't like know. The, whole, I, the whole, like, this is the exact shade of your eyes thing has always been, it's in a lot of romance novels, it and is. I've never... You know, the the guy's wearing a tie that's green that matches her eyes. And I'm like, no, and nobody with green eyes, their eyes are not even the same shade of green on a regular basis. And if you really wore something that matched their eyes, it would probably look like puce. It's not going to look like <laughs> emeralds because no one's of that color. So anyway, that was the only thing that I was kind of like, eh, I'm not 100% sure that seeing the color of your walls is going to make her think that you love her. Josh, come on. You know what I appreciate about this book is that I feel like we've talked about this before. Or I've at least written about how a lot of books can just feel very dated, and sometimes you find that like a romance author, like a contemporary romance author, is like someone living in Middle America who's like never been to a city and like doesn't know what people drink at bars and like like young people and just dresses them in clothing that no one would ever wear. And this didn't feel that at all. I know that Sally Thorne is Australian, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, there were, like, maybe once or twice that I would I, – I, I knew that going into it. So I was, like, waiting for her to, like, say something that didn't feel American because it felt like it needed to be, like, a Chicago story or a New York story mm -hmm. or something. She doesn't do anything that feels very – timely or feels like it's gonna you're gonna read it ten years from now and you're gonna be like, oh, that's a book from two thousand sixteen, you know? And I really appreciated that. Yeah. Um, I liked it because feel... it was it was city uh non specific. She yes. never mentions yeah. where they live. Never mentions. She said I remember one time her I don't remember what it was, but saying something that I was like, that's not a thing we say in America. <laughs> but I don't know I, that Yeah, I didn't I know she was Australian. Australian. Yeah, okay. There you go. Yeah. I thought it could have taken place in the U.S. I was trying. I was like, "Is this New York?" Because yeah. it felt like going in and out of the city. Yeah, so I thought it was something like that, and then I found out she was Australian, and I was like, "Huh." Yeah, then it comes through, and I like that about it too. I agree with Beth. I thought that it was like city neutral. It could have taken place anywhere, which kind of yeah. helps you like put yourself in yeah picture it better because you can just picture whatever you picture when you think of the city. Exactly. Yeah. 
and that that made it like really interesting and different than again a lot of novels that are mm -hmm. so specific about where they are that you get lost in some of those details sometimes. Yeah, mm -hmm. especially if you've been yeah. there. Like, sometimes if it's written yes. about New York, and I'm just like nobody would do that. Like, nobody goes there. <laughs> That's not a thing. People don't hang out in that district. Like, it's just or like, you're like these are 23 year olds. They can't afford to live there. They can't afford to eat there. <laughs> yeah. Can't afford to do that. Yes. Which, which brings me to one thought that I had, which was, is this how publishing houses really work? That, like, <laughs> an admin can run it? Right. Two 20-something admins, are, everyone is reporting to them. I mean, where's, like, the 45-year-old parents who've been working for 30 years, and they, like, go home to their kids, and they talk about their 25-year-old, su like, superior who hates them like that? No that way. can't be real life, yeah. right? You <laughs> don't suddenly so get to be like the third partner in an organization because you've been an, an, an executive assistant. <laughs> well, also, <laughs> how how old were they? I mean, because I, a lot of romance, you know, like a lot of contemporary romance are like in their early twenties, which we I feel like we've talked about before. It makes it you kind of feel like a little bit unrelatable because you're like, all right, I'm thirty, like. This is not what life was like when I was just out of college. But I feel like for them, like they were maybe close to thirty. Like not that yeah. they necessarily were like old, but they weren't. I didn't get the feeling that they were like right out of school. I kind of was like, oh, they've like maybe been in their jobs for eight or nine years. I don't know. Yeah, I think they were but, supposed to be late twenties. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of the feeling I got, especially with like the whole doctor thing and not being a doctor and whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I thought maybe that'll you know kind of age them out to late twenties. Yeah. So. There's Early a couple, I, I missed, um, yeah. Danelle said that she read, hold on, wait, 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 I missed it, I missed it. Uh, Courtney read, pulled it at 11 to 4 reading the book, and Danelle was only up to 1.30, so I think Beth may be the winner. She's <laughs> yeah. up to 5 reading the book. <laughs> I will take that crown. I will, I'll take that crown, because it really felt, I was, I was kind of, I was out of it for a couple of days. I, it took me a couple of days to like get over that night where I stayed up all night. <laughs> and I stay up a lot. Like I'll stay up till at least midnight every night reading. So this was kind of one of those like, you know, it was it was unusual for me to stay up till Ryan's <laughs> alarm went off. Seriously. He's still talking about it. He was ridiculous. He was like, "What in the world are you even doing?" I felt like an idiot. Um, another one of the like the things that bugged people about this book was the ex and how we oh, yeah. all saw his ex coming a mile away. Everyone knew mm -hmm. the bride was his ex. Like, was anybody surprised by that revelation other than Lucy? Right, exactly. <laughs> Only person surprised was the character. Well, I thought it was interesting because I, I think we all saw it coming a mile away, but then I was surprised when he said, Oh, I didn't even think about that. It was more like his heartbreak that he was more concerned about was his dad. Like he was like so nervous about that that he didn't even think like that the fact that she was an, his ex would be an issue and he was like so over that. And that surprised me. I was like, oh, I thought that, I don't know, I thought that that like that was his issue and it really wasn't his issue. Like that was an issue for Lucy but it wasn't for Josh. So that to me was a, like a, a little bit of a twist because I completely agree. I was like, oh, well, we all know where this is heading. And then it was like, oh, wait, he's actually not nervous about that. He's nervous about his dad. Like, okay, that was. That yeah, it's been a little, like, it was a little bit of a breath of fresh air that it, that yes. wasn't the, the, like, angst of that scene. It was not really about the bride. Um, yeah. Although you wanted to just kind of kick him for not. Yeah. No, and, right. you know, just giving yeah. her a heads up. But I did like that. That wasn't that. That wasn't his like his problem, or that mm -hmm. wasn't what was going on with him. So I was glad that it's not as as uh, tropey as it could have been. Right. Agreed. Yeah. But how awful that everyone is looking at him and like feeling sorry for him <laughs> and oh, <laughs> what a terrible night. <laughs> I wouldn't have gone to the wedding. I'm just saying that I would have sent a really nice gift. And just sort of, you know, here you go. But even if it was your sibling? Uh, <laughs> like if it was your ex, yeah. But if it was your sibling, I'd be like, That's what's so interesting that's about like, it being, like, that felt very, like, Connecticut. Like, they're from New York City, yeah. and they went to Connecticut for a wedding. But, like, that's, like, how she wrote it, right? But it, yeah. it, it probably isn't, especially because the way they talk, she talks about the city. It doesn't feel like New York, necessarily. It's really interesting how... 
That's why I was yeah. like picturing this like very waspy wedding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And yeah, it feels yeah. like there's not an equivalent in Australia. In Australia, yeah. unless like, like I, Melbourne is like that or something. Like yeah, I have no idea. Melbourne, yeah, I have no idea. I don't think that they have a waspy country. <laughs> <thing. It's> like, <laughs> like unless you mean actual wasps <laughs> that are probably ginormous and want to kill you. Yeah, like the only thing in the Aus Australia that's outside the city is like the bush and kangaroos. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, that's true. Maybe she was meant to have it be in the U.S. I don't know. Uh, it seemed to me like it was very purposefully meant to be in the U.S. <laughs> no, I mean, I, no, I, I don't think, I think that she meant it to be, like, where you could put it in, in Europe, you could put it yeah. in, you yeah. know, the East Coast, you could put it on the West Coast, you could put it in Australia if you felt it. I think that she meant for it to be very non-regionally specific, which was great. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it obviously had U.S. like spellings, but it's a U.S. Printing. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I'm sure the Australian one doesn't, but like, uh, I don't know. I think she meant it to be just non-specific. I, I loved that about it because a lot of times, sometimes a book needs the place. This one just didn't need the place. Yeah. You know, it didn't need yeah. it, need a place setting. I, I think that it was like it was just rich in other ways. I think that their office was really rich. Like the idea that every surface was <laughs> gleaming and every surface was a mirror. <laughs> yeah. It, <laughs> even just like yeah, even just the way she's talking about like where they go when they do their like little march to the kitchen or whatever together, <laughs> I could perfectly see their office. See, I could hear the carpet, right. and you know there was she was she was just more busy like making their world real and not talking yeah. so much about the city. I like appreciated that a lot. Um, yeah. Let's talk about Danny. Danny, the name, the graphic designer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Aw. A little sad sap. Um, oh, I, I assume Danny is one of those guys that would be attractive, but his shoulders slope. <laughs> or he's, like, pretty short. I mean, she says he is. Yeah. So he's a good, like, 5'7". Yeah, yeah, like, if he, maybe if he, puts a, if he puts a suit jacket on or, like, a burn coat, he looks like he's okay. But then when you do, when he takes his shirt off or when he when they do, do paintball or whatever, you're like, oh, <laughs> float down in a very unattractive way. Poor Danny. Yeah, he had the short end of that stick. Yeah, I did. He seemed yeah. like an okay guy. I felt bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he totally did. He's left for a guy that you're going to constantly friend zone like all the time. Hundred percent going to be friend zone. Um, Somebody said on Twitter, hold on, let me look. It's Anna um, Chuchaloo. She said she loved Lucy's parents. They were so damn adorable. And I have a post that may still come out. I'm not sure. We'll see if I can finish it. And I say that as I was watching them, listen, watching. See, I was so, this book is so vivid, right? Don't you feel like you're watching it? Yeah. 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 yeah there's something about it. So as I was reading it, I, all I was picturing was Renee. Skyping with Bella Swan and Twilight. Like if this was Twilight in 2016, I think Bella, that would have been Bella talking to her mom and Phil. <laughs> like, yeah, that's when I was like, oh, they're like heads are together and they're just like <laughs> they don't realize that they. Can. That's exactly what I thought. My exact picture of it was the bunny parents from Utopia who own the carrot farm. <laughs> I'm probably the only one on the panel who's seen Zootopia more than once because yeah. I have children. But the bunny in Zootopia goes in, off to the big city to become a police officer, and her parents <laughs> own a carrot farm, and they oh, wear bras, and they sell blueberries and carrots and stuff, and they just don't want her to go off to the big city, and they're so sweet. And that's what I kept thinking of was the parents from Zootopia who are bunnies. <laughs> that's really cute. Yeah. And I imagined her mom like Bonnie, but with dark hair. <laughs> Bonnie That's Hunt funny. and like Bonnie Hunt with dark who's hair. Who's the guy? Who's the guy from that was nominated for an Oscar for that movie with Miles Teller, the boxing movie? Um, J D. Not yeah. Pardo. He's from Twilight. No, not J D. He's like. <laughs> isn't he also in like Law and Order or something? <laughs> Yeah, J.K. J.K. Simmons, J.K. Yes, Simmons, that guy. Um, the dad, not J.K. J.K. Simmons, not J.D. Pardo. <laughs> the guy um, from Revolution. 
of <laughs> Nahuel nah fame. <laughs> I am 150 years old. <laughs> Oh, uh, ridiculous. Everything goes back to Twilight. For everything, all the time. Every day. This is why it's Boozy Book Club, because we can talk about Twilight <laughs> non-ironically. Um, this book was written by somebody who used to write Twilight. This is awesome. It is awesome. This is the kind of book that I actually feel okay, like, giving to my friends who think romance is, like, skanky. Yes. yes. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, not that I think that my friends are right to think that romance is skanky. Nope. But I know that I'm being secretly judged for reading so much totally. of it. Totally. 100% all the time. Yeah. Yep. So I, I know 100% I could give them this one and not worry that they're worried like, about the word like, pop. Generally, yeah. I don't yeah. remember the sex. And guys, for me to say that about a book, we know me. I read books <laughs> for sex. I know. Yeah. It was so, yeah. There was sex in it. I know there was, and yeah. I think I remember thinking it was good. I just don't remember it. I feel like I it. should read some of it. All right, do it. Read some sex, <laughs> man. Bring the it. First, the first touch is a swirl. <laughs> kind of lick you make to the top of a melting ice cream cone. Oh, guys, this is going down there. Got it. I breathe <laughs> it so hard, I nearly snort, and he kisses my inner thigh, a reward. I can't form any human words. The second is a kiss, and I think of his signature first date kiss. Chase, soft, no tongue. The promise of everything to come. I hug a pillow and decide he's never going on a first date with anyone ever again. <laughs> That's why she wrote so good. Because it's sexy, but it's also really sweet. It's so sweet. Yeah. yeah so would you all want to see this book made into a movie? Mm -hmm. mm. Or is it so good as a book that the movie would just ruin it? Yeah, probably, but... I would love to, but I think, yeah, I feel like I would. You'd still go see it if they did it. <laughs> I don't know because yeah. I keep thinking, I keep thinking Josh would be great as like younger Jason Bateman, <sighs> who, by the way, has a huge wiener. Schlong. <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Do you see it in the locker room? It's like common knowledge. Oh. Huh. Now I have to do with Jason Bateman. Yeah. Jason <laughs> I don't know what he looks like. like. Amongst a type of person that know things like that, they know that Jason Bateman's got big garbage. Um, <laughs> yeah, but he's 47, so we definitely need a younger version. He is? Um, yeah. Yeah, according to the Google. Or, right. no, look at Are you looking, you're looking at a schlong right now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm looking at Zachary Levi in there. there. Zachary Levi? Mm -hmm. But he's too old for Joshua, but yeah, he would be like a good, he's too old. I'd like, the age idea, it. I'd like the idea that Zach, I love the fact that the reason all of this is happening, the reason that it takes Josh a year to even talk to Luke, to even like kiss her, approach her, all that stuff, despite the fact that he's sexy and she's sexy yeah. and they should have been having sex like months before right. they ever did. Totally. It's yes. because he's like yes. painfully, painfully shy. Yeah. In reality. I love that. And that yeah. takes a specific type of actor to come off doing all of that and not make it seem arrogant. Right. Yeah. Jim yeah. Halpert. John Krasinski. Yeah, it is. It's kind of works. I about love him it. so yeah. much. I just was trying not to say his name. <laughs> but he's so perfect in every way that it's very difficult not to. And he's and he's tall, isn't he? So he is six three. Yeah. Ask her okay. anything. She'll tell you everything. She probably knows what a schlong looks like. I know. I do, actually. I'm what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Among a certain group of people who know things like that, we all have the picture. Where did it come from? Send it to me immediately. Um, it's not really of the whole thing. It's kind of like bunched up <laughs> underneath some slacks. But, um, <laughs> He's been slacked. <laughs> Which is exactly what we all want to hear. The word dick pick and slacks in the same sentence. <laughs> Bunched up. Bunched up dick yeah. pick and some slacks. I love him so much. His middle name is Burke. I know that. B U R K E. Which is his mother's maiden name. Anything else you want to know? <laughs> oh, if he's a good kisser, I guess. Well, probably. I know he is. Probably is, yeah. He's too smart not to be. Those dorks, man. 
Um, okay. Ooh. Okay. So, so the hating game. Okay. For all of you that are, were you uh, gonna were you gonna close this out? We got to give it some wine bottles. Yeah, I was gonna give it wine bottles. I mean, this out of for like this year, I think it's the book best book I've read. So I don't know. For 2016, I give it five wine bottles out of five. Yeah, guys, we give it a thumbs up, and then we, that translates to wine bottles, and then we tell you how many wine bottles we give it out of five. There's four of us. We're going to give it an extra thumbs up for the Goodreads group, who all super loved it. Super loved it. Thumbs up for you, Laura? Thumbs up for me. It was pretty yeah. amazing. That's that's a five wine bottle book right there. Damn it. Ooh. Congratulations, yep. Sally Thorne. <laughs> Good job. Good job on a great book that we all super loved. I could take a sequel. I'll yeah. read one. I'll read one about what's her name's parents on the strawberry farm. I could take down. <laughs> I need to know like how the visit to the strawberry farm went. Oh, These are things epilogue. I need to know. An epilogue about their yeah. wedding at the strawberry oh, farm. Yes. yes. Where they get married in a gazebo that's decked yeah. out like the strawberry shortcake gazebo I had in 1985. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what we need. I need to know that his dad apologized for being a douche for so long. Yeah. Like oh, no, there are gosh. things I need to know about Jericho. this book. Jeremiah, yeah. how's Jeremiah doing? That was real cute. Um, just this is a real uh, another quick little tidbit. You know how she collects Smurfs, and that yeah. seems really odd. Yeah, it's really awkward. <laughs> well, Sally collects those uh, dolls with the big eyes, those little ones. Uh huh. Yeah. Not mm -hmm. Madame Alexander's. I don't know what they ones. are. Yeah. Anyway, she collects those dolls, and so she thinks she even has them as her, like, Twitter pictures. So uh, that's kind of like a cool, like, quirky yeah. thing that, that she put in for her. I like it. That's cute. That's cute. Yeah. I like that. All right, let's chat Arcana Chronicles. You guys, if you didn't read Arcana Chronicles and you think that you're going to close out right now, let me tell you something. <laughs> you need to read this series. We started it over a year and a half, two years ago, something we read, Poison Princess. We loved it so much. It's ridiculous when you first read it. You're like, what is this Cajun accent? <laughs> I, cannot, I cannot read this. All right? Well, you think yeah. that you want to just rip out Jack's vocal cords and throw them down because it doesn't make sense. But then you start saying things like, I got me some champagne, me. And you, <laughs> you think yeah. that you got it. And then it gets gets better and better. That the whole series gets better and better. So we're talking tonight about Arcana Rising, which is the fourth installment. I read it. Who else read it? I read it. Not yet. So don't spoil it for me. But I guess I gotta just ignore you guys. No, <laughs> you're just gonna have to read it. it no, I will. Is, the thing is, is it's I'm the champagne's hit. <laughs> um. It's very short. It all um, it's yes. too short. Wait, it this is, is the short. novella or no? This is the no. an awful novel. Really? Yeah. It it totally felt like the a good first half of the fourth book. Really? Really. It ended yeah. and I was like because I got it early I thought, "Oh, they didn't send me the whole book." <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I, I like looked it up to make sure that I was that was right, and it was right. Um, it's very short, and I think that must be some sort of publishing voodoo that they're doing. I mean, surely that's you know she she had a reason to end it there, but at the same time, like it seems like they just are kind of trying to get another book out of it. Well, the Kindle version was only five ninety nine. I feel like a normal Kindle ah. book is like nine ninety nine. So at least sure. it wasn't yeah. it wasn't full price for what felt like a half book. But it's true. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I agree. I still I'm like I would have rather have just waited for the entire fourth book. Yeah. Because it's the ends extra on four dollars. Yeah. It, it ends on such a weird cliff too. You're just like, what? There was yeah. so much that hadn't been explored. There wasn't even like mm -hmm. a really big battle in this one. Even like even no. that felt really small and, and like the stakes weren't very high. Yeah, like no one everyone that started out in the book ended in the book. Right? Like, no one died, I don't think. Mm -hmm. There's major drama. Like, oh, there's major didn't... drama. Yeah. There's but there's just not really a lot of resolution. Yeah. Yeah. So, Becca, we're going to spoil this for you. Well, I don't want to hear it. Can but I get it off? 
as team, your team death girl. I think I'm team death, yeah. He's not dead. He's not dead, no. We'll no one die. dies in this no one. one. But the beginning of this one, Evie assumes that Jack is dead. Yes. And okay. because Richter, who is the emperor, had made that big lava storm. Right. And, like, he right. and Moon Selena, yeah. like, were going off of the army, and it covered all of them as Got he it. was walking away. And so she's, like, going to find death to, like, hook up back up with him to try to figure out. And she, anyway, she thinks Jack is dead. She continues to think Jack is dead throughout this entire novel, but we see Jack later on. He has his own point of view chapters. Um, and so I guess because she thinks Jack is dead, she decides to go full-on um, marriage with, with death. So death gets laid in this book. <laughs> By Evie, finally? <laughs> well, he's, she's the only one he can lay. <laughs> Yeah. It, it worked out. It was hot. It was hot. It was good. Because remember when he, what did he do? Go down on her fingers yes. a couple books ago, and I was so hot. Like the hottest sex scene I've really ever read in like a YA book, for sure. It was super hot for YA, and you guys probably just skimmed it because you read them all in quick succession. Oh, that was like, oh, man. I like reread that scene. <laughs> <laughs> Becca and I like we were like texting about it. Like, Holy <laughs> shit. Did you read this death kiss scene? And that's all it says. Right. Like, oh, oh and so good. Kiss. And like we were like, what? This is super hot. So hot. <laughs> Even though she had like Stockholm syndrome, and he's like making her dance ballet right. like she's part of a music box. We're like, do it. Let's <laughs> get naked. <laughs> It's the end of the world anyway, it's fine. Yeah. I know. Like it's just such a I like the concept of the book. That's what really gets me is that it's the end of the world and there's all these like really shitty things going on. But she's still stressing out about like which boy likes her. <laughs> because she's sixteen and it's mm -hmm. it's Wait, she's normal, right? That's all she knows. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's, that's why A. That's why oh, A. Yeah. End of the world, but you're still like worried about your orgasms. Right. Um I also just really loved this one specifically because there was so little Jack, and I'm not a Jack yeah, fan. Yeah, me neither. I'm not a Jack fan either. And I don't really care what happens to him. <laughs> Aw, poor Jack. He loves her so much, though. He does love yeah. her. He does love her, but it doesn't mean he's better at the death gift. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, there's just something about him that bugs me, but I, I want him to survive, but I want him to survive celibate. <laughs> <laughs> or like hook up with I don't know what are one of those other girls' names. She's dead. Um, yeah, I want to like girl? go oh, with Selena right. and she died. Go do that. Yeah, she gone. She yeah, died she in does. before this book. She dies at the end of yeah, the yeah, last. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I guess. I mean, yeah. Jack survives randomly, but she makes. But this is a lot. She dies in the lava. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, how does Jack survive and she dies? She he gets pushed into a well or like a mine shaft. That's right. He yeah. explains it. He gets he get like he goes down into a mine shaft or something, and so he survives that way. The lava doesn't come down okay. there. Gotcha. Yeah, I can't remember, but yeah, yeah. So I since I read them all like back to back to back. I mean, I feel like at the end of book one. Obviously, you didn't really know who Death was, so it was like, yeah, all right, Jack. And then, um, so then I guess by the time this book started, I was like, pretty much like on the fence because you know I'm like, oh, like both of these characters are great. And then after this one, I, I guess just her being like married to Death, then I was like, yeah, I would probably go that direction too. But I don't know. It just seems like yeah. they're more faded. Like, yeah, they have a a connection that spans time and distance, and they and just she seem is like what? right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, there's just more going on there. Yeah. And if you read Day Zero, which was the little novella like with all the different characters, mm. in it, yeah, I saw me um, There's one, the one that has deaths in it. He's talking about. Um, it would be like this particular game where he's ready to destroy her or whatever when he's had all these thousands of years to decide how he's going to destroy her it, he says something like 
it would turn out that this one game is the one where she ends up being like like totally beautiful. And um, I guess like before, she's not necessarily like this beautiful creature. She's just like, yeah. you know, magnetic because the Empress or whatever. Yeah. But like she hasn't necessarily been beautiful before. So there's a mm. lot of like angst going on with death this time around. Gotcha. And I just, I just really like it a lot. <laughs> yeah. Courtney says that she was really glad for Day Zero, that novella that was between three and four, because otherwise she would have been like, WTF. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Like, I needed to read Day Zero when it came out because I didn't remember yeah. a lot of what was, had happened. I'm sure if I had read three right before I read four, it would have been fine without it. But there's a couple of characters like Saul, who's the son, and Fortune, who's like Lady Luck. And they are introduced in four, and it was cool to see, like, especially Fortune's backstory. Because I don't particularly think that she's 100% bad. She's aligned with the Emperor. I don't think that that's her whole story, and a lot of that comes from what I read about her in Day Zero. Okay. And then um, also somebody, gosh, I don't see it, said, okay, four, said, WTF Matthew. Oh. Uh, yeah. I don't know what that means. Matthew. Remember Matthew? Yeah. yeah, I remember him. Autistic guy. Yeah. Matthew's manipulating the whole game, I think. Yeah. He's a bad guy? I think so. It's, really? It's up for debate. I think he's yeah. I think he's a bad guy, but then I think he's also like he has his own idea about how he wants this game to go, and so he's just going to make it go that way, whether it's a whether it's going to screw over other people or not, sort of thing. So, but I don't he's know. Got, like, but I don't want to think that about him because I like him. He's but. got too much power over everybody's yeah perceptions mm -hmm. of how things are going, and I think that that causes. Um, when he's sane, when he's aware of that, then I think that he uh, is power hunt, like really, really drunk on that amount of power. And it's, I don't think it's all like stupidity or like being silly or whatever. I think he's very, very manipulative, especially yeah. this book. That's interesting. Yeah. That's definitely not what I remember him as knowing, you know, before. Yeah. No, you don't get that until this book at all. Yeah, you yeah. think he's like weak and needs help and all yeah. that stuff. But I think that's part of his game. Is he like the gamekeeper and or game maker in the Hunger Games, where his goal is just to bring everybody together into like giant chaos? Like he's just yeah. manipulating it and pulling all the strings. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He bugs me, but he'll last till the end. And okay, so here's the big cliffhanger at the end, Becca. So if you don't want to know, I don't think I want to know. It's gonna take out my ears. Just okay. wave when I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> so the pregnancy. Yeah. Um, there's two aspects to the pregnancy that I think are weird. One is Paul some sort of bad guy. One of our readers brought up in the Goodreads mm. group that they think that Paul, you know, maybe be a minor card or a minor arcana or mm. something and is working with, with someone else to like cause Evie to get pregnant. So is Paul a baddie and is he somebody we need to be worried about or be watching? Or is, is the baby a game changer? Like, is this actually going to change the way that Arcana um, interact with each other? Or both. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, it makes me really, I don't know, curious, because how, why in the world would he have Depo Provera shots on him? Like, oh, yeah, here's some birth control. Have yeah. a good day. Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. So, I don't know, I feel like maybe that was a little bit of manipulation, whether it was on Paul's part or Death's part, I don't know, mm -hmm. but, I don't know, it was, it was definitely, to me, a little fishy. Yeah. I definitely think it was fishy. I definitely think the baby is going to be a game changer, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's something yeah. about life, death coming together and making yeah. something new that creates, uh, even if it just creates a baby, creates an arcana that has... Mm -hmm newness of life yeah. some somehow is going to like create something new so yeah. I'm I'm interested in where she's going with that but I want it like now I think it, I think the next book is coming out in February so we don't have to wait that long um, I know at the I think before I don't know if it was before we started this book or after it I think Beth you said about the theory is Jack the card that hasn't been activated yet, do you still right. think that's a possibility? I or? think that's more than a possibility. That's really kind yeah. of the only possibility at this point. I think so too. I, I got that thought the whole time. 
because Matthew's like pretty interested in him now, and so I was kind of like, I could, I didn't really see it before, but yeah. now I was like, I could see that. But then there are certain things where, because I think that I read that before I started reading any of the books, so I was like looking for it from the beginning, mm -hmm. and then there are other things where I'm like, well, but if he was a card, then I think, you know, like wouldn't he have a clue by now? Like with as yeah. many as he's been around. Yeah. But Yeah, but if like uh, Matthew is purposely cloaking his awareness. Yeah, that's like true. there's in this book he sees double a couple of times when he looks at oh. Matthew and so you assume that maybe like his like card. The card. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I think I think it's pretty obvious. I think she probably yeah. didn't want it to be as obvious as it is. And so she's yeah. like not saying or she's holding it back, and that may be why this book ended up being as short as it was, because that comes to fruition pretty soon in the fifth book, because it just doesn't, there's not any other player in their lives to all yeah. of a sudden be this, un you know, deactivated, yeah. unactivated card. And um, yeah. it, would, it would make total sense, too, about why Matthew went back for him, like when he was in the, um, was he in like a cannibal thing in the, yeah. in the mountain? Yeah. Um, yeah you know, like, why Matthew would go back, because clearly Matthew doesn't need Jack to survive or to, yeah. you know, kick some major ass. So really what was the point yeah. for him to yeah. go back and get him if he's not the inactivated card? Yeah. Theories. Yep. Needs That's to happen. Yeah. I'm ready for that book immediately. Like, I could just... Yeah. It's one of those things where I I made a pact for myself that I wasn't going to read an unfinished series for a long time because it's just <laughs> such a it's such a yes. bummer, man. When you just read the last book, but then there's also something really great about waiting and knowing that it's coming and being excited. So this is one of those series that I'm willing to put aside the unfinished work in progress aspect of it because I enjoy it so much. Yeah. So if you're still with us and you haven't read Arcana or you're waiting to see if you need to read Arcana, I think the last book will be out in February. So you can wait or you can read it now and anticipate with us. And still talk to us on Goodreads about the fun stuff. Becca, we're back. I keep waving at you, but you're like totally yeah. drunk. <laughs> Becca! <laughs> we're going um, back? Yes, you can okay. come back. We're um, going to close out. We're gonna say good night. Okay. I think I'm. I think I think for Arcana Chronicles, we really need to give wine bottles. I'm not gonna be able to give it a full wine bottle because it felt like it wasn't a full book. So yeah. I'm gonna give it half a thumb. What do you guys go with? Agreed. The, I mean, the half of the book that it was, I really enjoyed. I just yeah. wish there was more of it. So. Um, I'm gonna go with a full thumb because. I read all of the books so <laughs> fast and all together that they all feel like one giant book to me. So okay, that makes sense. <laughs> all right. So how, I can't throw it. So what does that give us? I'm five. gonna say it's at least three and a half. Okay. I'm just yeah. gonna get the wine bottle thing. Really doesn't make any arbitrary. Sense. It's really just <laughs> it ends up being whatever I whatever stars I gave it on Goodreads is really what it ends up being every time. So three and a half ish. Presley, we, Presley, we need that other book. Okay. Yeah. I right. want I want death to be triumphant. I don't <laughs> care if Evie dies. <laughs> okay, but if she dies, then I guess she'll come back eventually. Right. I mean, they so. all come back sooner or later, so it's not that big sure. of a deal, right? Yeah. It's not. It's <laughs> not. So anyway, great book. Thank you, Cressley, for writing them. I really enjoy them. And uh, thank you guys for joining us for Boozy Book Club. And let's talk about next month real quick. Next month is September. It's here in a couple of days. On September 6th, our Boozy Book Club pick for, November, for September comes out. It's Gail Foreman's newest. And I believe oh. it's called Leave Me Alone or something like that. And I <laughs> suck for not knowing the title. Do we know anything about it? I mean, is it related to any other things she's written so far? It's a standalone and it is not YA. It's an adult novel. And I really, really? think that, yeah. I'm really excited about that aspect of it because Gail is great at YA. She's great at what she does. Um, she's really great at like making us care about really important, you know, issues that you didn't think you were going to care about. She's also great at frustration. I sometimes get really frustrated with her. Um, yeah. So, but anyway, her books are really great. They're really well, well written. If you guys haven't read Gail Foreman before, 
start with If I Stay and read Where She Went, Where She Went is an absolute favorite oh, novel of hers. Okay. Um, it's so, so good. And uh, it's just, it's really fantastic. And my internet's not working enough for me to pull up what the title of her next book is. But it's something like uh, Leave Me Alone, I think is the name of it. But it's September, it comes out September the 6th, so it comes out next Tuesday. That's our, our main pick for September. And our secondary pick for September is American Gods by Neil Gaiman. Um, I've read American Gods three times. I <laughs> love it. It's one of my favorite books. Neil Gaiman uh, is obviously just an amazing, fantastic actor. But Stars is coming out with a new series. Actor? Author. <laughs> <laughs> Champagne. Um, <laughs> But the American Gods is fantastic. It's full of mythos. It's it's when I when I first read it, it was one of those books that I read. I think it came out like two thousand one. It's one of those books that you're like, what? This book hasn't always been around. That's how yeah. it felt. Like this huh. feels like one of those books that you read when you when your consciousness came. You know, when you realized you could read. Like it's just <laughs> one of those books that just is. It should have always been here. And so Funny. that's how it feels. It's just very indelible and. Um, so that's our optional pick. We want everybody to read it eventually because we are going to, or at least I'm going to talk about the series the a lot. Yeah, you're not going to hear the end of it. Right. <laughs> so I want everybody to be on board with it with me. And that's why I want you to read it for September. But it's our optional books, our May book. And I found out the title. It's called Leave Me by Gail Foreman. And um, it'll be out on September the 6th. And again, Gail's great. I mean, she's writes beautiful novels, so I'm really anticipating this is going to be a great one. And we've got the October's coming up. October's going to be even better. November is going to be even better. <laughs> the books keep getting better and better and better at the Book Club this year, so we're excited. Yes, it's going to be great. Thank you guys for joining us. Laura and yeah. thank you for chatting with us. Thank you for reading, Thanks, everybody. Guys. Yeah, they were great. I love them. Yay! Yep. They were both awesome books. Yeah, great awesome. books. Great month for books. Yeah. Sally Thorne, write that strawberry patch wedding for Seriously. us, okay? Do yeah. it, girl. Do it, girl. I need We're it. Ready for it. I need it. Good night, everybody. We will Good see night. you next month. Good, Good night. night.